think that that's your bet. You were drunk on the wine and we were missing you. Stable sheep is looking stable-ish. She looks quite good actually. Um, she's still not stood up. I don't know if that will come right. They're like a week and a half off lambing. So totally brutal, but if we can get lambs out alive. I'll just have a little walk around the field and check all the sheep are all right. Everyone is the right way up and nobody has got any bits hanging out that they shouldn't have. Lambing is only um, like a week and a couple of days away. You can mess around them feeders. God, some pull through, serious. The drier stuff, they pull through a lot more. Yesterday I was speaking, it's windy. Yesterday I was speaking to Charlie Farms, uh, Charlie Beatty, and do you know what? She um, very quickly had to put the phone down because someone had rang her and said there was a dog off the lead in a field. And I was like, what? So anyway, she put the phone down and went really quickly. Rang me back a couple of minutes later. Um, and people have been walking on a public footpath, I presume, through a field with lambs and sheep in because she's on lambing. She completely let the dogs off the lead, wandering around. They didn't see a problem. It is astounding to me that people can think like that it really is it's something that i've never really had to bother about to be honest we have no public footpaths um we've never really known anyone or noticed anyone around the sheep i've never been a victim of any kind of dog attack or anything like that so it's something that's a little bit alien to me um and then i went to nfu conference the other day and helen drinkall was doing um a question to keir starmer and it was about like extending the right to roam and how devastating it would be for her because she farms like on the urban fringe we're in the middle of nowhere and i think the perspective from right to Rome, that kind of thing is very different when you are close to a town where people have a distinct lack of respect for livestock and farmland. Being one of the most divisive TikToks that I ever made, um, there was a campaign on um, about dogs on leads, keep it on a lead. Um, and I took part in it. They asked me to take part, which is absolutely wonderful. Loads of farmers did, um, social media farmers, and all at the same time, we did a bit of a, like a, is it a thunderclap or whatever the hell they call it, when everyone does it at the same time, for maximum effect. And it was one of the most divisive TikToks I'd ever done, which was absolutely bizarre, considering I'd, I had touched on topics such as badger culling, um, uh, TB, you know, big things that people normally were very cross about. This is a short video from the Herdy Company asking people to please keep their dogs on a lead. My name is Charlotte Ashley and I'm a farmer from the Eden Valley. And I just wanted to um, stand beside the Herdy Company and express my concern for people leaving their dogs off leads at any time of year, but mostly at this time of year. No matter how wonderful and pet like you think your dog is it is a dog i have three dogs your dog is the same as my dog and it's the same as next door's dog and it's the same as my mum's dog they are dogs i have witnessed firsthand a dog chasing livestock and let me tell you it was stopping for nothing and the only reason we got hold of it is because it took a yow down by a neck and was going to be laying into her and we managed to jump on him and stop him before that happened. Now that dog was rehomed, actually. The whole thing was nothing to do with me. I was just there and trying to help catch it. No matter how safe you think your dog is, please, please, please do not be responsible for killing one of these. Cause it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty at all. Do not let the side down and put a lead on. In all honesty, I don't even see why people can't put leads on. Really, seriously. Is it like this self-righteous kind of, you know, my dog won't do that, I'm better than, you know, animal instinct? It must be, it must be. I cannot see the issue with putting a lead on a dog. I put leads on my dogs. I have three dogs. I wouldn't walk them around the farm or around animals without a lead on. I just wouldn't do it. To those of you who do keep your dog on a lead, thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
That is what any sensible person would do. And for those of you who do not keep your dog on a lead, there is a chance that you can get an unlimited fine or a six month prison sentence. And in worst case, your dog will be shot. So let's just leave that one with you, hey? Maybe you might think twice. I'll take some going back because it was a long time ago, but I'll try and find the comments. Um, there were people in that comment section who clearly just did not see an issue, did not see an issue at all. And they, it's not only that they didn't see an issue with keeping dogs on the leads, they like vocally said that it wasn't their problem and it was their right to do what they wanted. It was, honestly, it was an eye opener for me. Something that I thought was gonna be a simple, oh, this is a nice farming message, you know, something just to get involved in. It became like a bit of a, oh my God, you asshole. Do you know what I mean? I was really cross about it. It's just crazy. Um, so I don't really know what I would do if I caught someone's dog running around the sheep. Obviously on our favor, they're not meant to, you know what I mean? But equally in Helen, her favor, they're not meant to be off a footpath and the do dogs aren't meant to be off a lead. I don't know. Um, so basically Keir Starmer's answer was, it's something we can discuss basically but then in the next breath he said he supported the right to roam so it's just a bit like i don't know i don't know whether he just he just didn't see the issue and, and i can't understand how you can't see the issue of dogs chasing livestock around it's just it's beyond me it, it defies like logic why would you not care that somebody's pet pooch is going around you know harassing livestock why are you sat looking? Good lass. Huh. It does not look well. She's like hunchbacked. She looks slightly thin, if anything. I'm gonna dive, I'll put you in my pocket. I'm gonna dive on her, I think, and I'm gonna take her in because she's not happy somehow. Not this fat ass, this one here. Yeah, she ain't happy at all. What's the poo doing? I'm not making eye contact, so she doesn't realise what I'm doing. So I'm about to be in bags of trouble. Um, because Roy always says, why do you walk around the sheep? Why don't you take the motorbike in the trailer? That way you don't need to ring me and ask me to bring it when you've caught something. That's exactly what he's going to say, I bet you. Anyway, um, she's not putting up a fight. That's an instant. There's something wrong with her. Um, so I'm going to take her back. She's, she's quite she's quite thin to be fair so i'll bring her in and give her some extras she is having twins so and she is just a little thing i'll bring her in and see what i can do she's just not right do you know what i mean she's just not right and she just looks like she's not eating somehow like she's not she's not thriving anywho i'll fetch her in So do you let it go? Let it go. We have a big little poro. Oh, like you. Give her some hay first off. I keep turning her over um, all the time so that um, she's not lying on one side. I'll give her some water. I'll give her some um, like keto stuff, like twin lamb stuff, um, and I'll yeah see how it goes she's not desperately ailing it's just something you know what i mean ladies this is how we get dirty get out you're knocking it crazy sheep girls girls by two sheep and deposited on my ass. <laughs> They're mobbing me, I can't help it. They're being naughty. So last night, uh, the bullocks from down the bottom that I was throwing out escaped. Now where do you little sh you are? Hut. Ah. Right! Jesus Christ. Hey. 
Stand where you are. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. This is, this is, this is, ah, I don't want to go over there. There's nothing worse. It's dark. Little. Come on. She's not on. Very naughty. You're not even funny. Not even funny. Move. Oh, I need my bed. They just chewed all the string that I tied the gate with because it's a bit of a makeshift pen, to be fair. And it was funny, we, we slagged Win off the dog because he's fair. He's not bad, he's all right. He's just different to what a, a collie would work like. And he's very vocal and he's quite up close with the sheep. He doesn't give him any space. Like, he can clear a field in 10 seconds just by his voice. He's crazy. But... He is the eyes and ears of the farm, completely, 100%. So last night, I was sat at the kitchen table editing a video and the, the bullocks escaped. Now, obviously, this is round a corner and nowhere we can see at all. Anyway, the dog starts barking and I knew instantly something was different and something was wrong. So I walked outside and I was like looking at him. Couldn't see any cattle at all, but he'd managed to know that they were out down the yard. So I ran around the corner and obviously all the cattle were out. He could hear them. And I just think he is invaluable to us. He's amazing. If somebody different comes in the yard, he tells us. If the cattle are out, he tells us. If they escape and he, we want him to put them back in, he does. Like, he's really, really good. He's just different. Um, I will get back to training him, like, which sides and things in summer when I start with Nelly Gray. But, as it stands now, he's actually bloody brilliant and we're super proud of him. I was, it took me a while, I was really disappointed with how he worked. Um, and I was trying to make him into a collie. Uh, just because that's what I imagined him to be like and it didn't work like that. So he was getting frustrated, I was getting frustrated. Um, and don't get me wrong, you actually, like when I look at videos back from someone who was training him in pens and stuff, he's amazing, he was really good. Um, but it just wasn't quite as natural as I wanted him to be, sort of. But he actually has more uses than that. He is pretty amazing. of that there is a very clear distinct line when you are raising dairy bullocks i like half of them look like bella hadid or whatever she's called or kylie jenner get back get back get back great and then half look like a crackhead that doesn't eat enough that literally is living homeless there's not really a middle ground funny although i come in here every day and we obviously feed every day at the keenan we will never in our lifetime again have 40 suckler calves milling around in a shed ever this is it and we'll split them up later on um and yeah that that's it changes are happening to tell you i'll miss it <laughs> but when it's going well i'll miss it but when it's going rubbish Totally not gonna miss it. Whoosh, go on. Head of an hero. So I'm just having one last walk around the field before I go and make some tea, making sure everybody is okay. And you know, I overheard a conversation on a train and we were talking about, or they were talking about, and I was sat there. Uh, somebody who was on farming life and their animals didn't look very good. Now, that's all well and good but it just made me did you see that that's an escapee it made me question myself a little bit actually 
So what about if my animals don't look good? And should I be showing you my animals not looking good? That sheep before that I took in, she was really skinny. Now, obviously, unless she acted peculiarly in a field, I wasn't gonna necessarily notice that she looked skinny. But it just made me question whether or not um, it's showing you the, the gruesome bits and the not quite right bits are opening me up to unnecessary judgment. And in some cases, I think definitely is. But in other cases, you can only play the hand that you dealt. And if something does look skinny, I dropped my billion twine before when I was chasing that shape, didn't I? Um, if something does look thin and it's ailing, I don't see how I could lie about it and pretend that it's all right. So I'm not holding this up very well, am I? It's windy, see, I'm holding it down because of the wind. I don't see how I could lie about it um, and pretend that everything's rosy and perfect and Instagrammable and lovely. I, I, it's just, I can't, I've never been able to do it and I don't think I could do it. Like someone commented last night that you're not your usual bubbly self. I'm pretty knackered to be fair. I went to NFU conference and then obviously the work was to catch up on. So we've been running around like crazy and then I'm trying to put a video out every night. I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. It is however, quite a thing to do. What is this? Look at this. Hey. Make me feel so loved. Look at your face. Look at your face. You're a disgrace. I'm making a cottage pie and it just reminds me of Big Mick. So it's Saturday night um, and I fancy some sweets. <laughs> so I'm going to make my video. I'm going to go to the club, get a load of sweets. And it's funny, like, we've never got out of the habit talked a lot on today's video whoever that person is who didn't like me talking you're gonna be really disappointed today um we've never got out of the habit from the garage sunday was always the hardest working day of the week always it uh it's just the way it was it was the only time we had any time we've never really got out of the habit if i'm honest um, and we still plan everything for a Sunday, even though we are working full time. It's kind of annoying because it means that you don't get a day off, ever. Yeah, I can see the advantages to people having structured days off when they're farming. That's another thing. It's a conversation. It's a quite a big conversation, that, isn't it? How do you structure your break times? Yeah, you know, other people have, you have to have a break every so many hours. Um, you're operating heavy machinery, you have to have a break. Tachographs or wagons. What about farmers? They just kind of slog on, don't they, and carry on through the night in most cases, like arable farmers, they just carry on going, don't they? It's crazy. So anyway, I'm going to make this video and I'm going to go to Corp and buy a load of sweets. Yeah, yeah. I will see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>